research. Heaven knows the sadness enough that Richard would be the leading us on rotation. He was much loved and a distinguishing teacher as I have never seen anybody work so hard to tutor the new, younger and newly arriving students and some of the older ones too. Uh, I would always find him in the gazebo or the faculty meeting area upstairs or down here. The yet another student poured over a book explaining what he'd learned to understand. And whenever he got to understand something, we would immediately want to go out and teach it to somebody else. I've never seen a student want to do that so much. I was a kind of mentor, unofficially, uh, to Richard because we had a common passion, we discovered. We didn't talk a lot about philosophy too much. Our common passion was information technology and medicine. Uh, he was growing more and more interested in what I was doing. We were talking. He was going to join in the research collaboration with a number of universities to answer the new President's Council call for new way to do things in information systems for medicine. And ironically, he was going to be, <coughs> although we didn't know the time exactly at the time, on the conference call this evening with me tonight to the United States with a number of uh, people from universities like uh, Harvard and Stanford will be on that line planning together the future of healthcare technology. Uh, that interest was because he had, of course, a strong IT background. It was a growing interest of his to apply the power of information technology to save lives. And I think he always had in part that vision. I know he wants to be a physician too everyday position, but he grew increasingly interested in that. We spent a lot of time together, much blogging on our LinkedIn group for that very purpose, uh, and a great deal of time discussing those things. I don't think we ever touch philosophy, but we spent endless hours on healthcare and information technology. He'd be dealing this by me and of course by him. didn't suffer before he went, left us. As we see, there are a lot of people sitting here, and they might be wondering what is my role there. I supposed to be his mentor. And we met, we met a couple of times in a group. We had food, we ch had chat in the conference rooms. And I was amazed by to see that what is his courage that to come and study medicine at this age. I always used to ask him that. How did you get that mental stability? I don't have that capacity at that age actually to come and study this. He had a unique idea about the life. He wanted to serve not only the patient, but also he wanted to help his <coughs> classmates. And I can see it here that how many people loved him. God also loved him. Mm. That is why he took him away. I wish all best to his family. On behalf of my family, my wife, my son, everybody loves him so much. So may his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Think of him as gone away. His journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets, and the road is only one. Just think of him as resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no danger here. Think how we must be wishing that we can know today how nothing but our sadness can truly pass away. And think of him as living in the hearts of those he touched, for nothing loved.
for the next semester. Uh, some of Richard's friends put together a quick slideshow on his behalf. My Adobe is working. know from what I've prepared, I hope that you all can take solace in that 
when Richard passed that he wasn't alone. He wasn't by himself. He had a good friend with him. Franz Ogenhorst was in the car with him um, that night. And he's currently in the hospital, but he's recovering well. I can't describe how big of a heart Franz had. Neither can I describe that of Richard. But I can say that it would consume the whole room if you put those two together. First experience I had with Richard was shortly after one of our morning lectures in anatomy. The topic was about heart problems, and it was called coarctation of the heart. Sorry. And one of the symptoms is called rib notching. Well, the current PowerPoint that we had, I couldn't really tell by the picture. And so after the lecture was over, Richard came to me, didn't say anything, and just plopped his laptop in front of me with four to five pictures of what rib notching was. And I said, okay, that's awesome. That's just the type of guy that he was. I didn't understand. He did. And he wanted to set me in the right direction. But he also added, but the PowerPoint doesn't mention that the process can take up years to show. It hadn't even occurred to me. Because you're supposed to understand it inherently. And I didn't. <laughs> so not only did he show me a better way to look at an x-ray, but he had to do other information I hadn't even considered yet. And so I tried to play it off like it was no big deal. I said, oh, yeah, of course, that makes sense. But in actuality, I felt like a little kid who had just been saved by Superman, and all I could reply was, a, you know, gee golly, Mr. Thanks. <laughs> but my next thought was, wow, this guy's in my class. And then the next second I thought, Oh no, this guy is in my class. <laughs> He's going to wipe the floor with me academically. And I was right, he did. Day in, day out, lecture after lecture. That's what he did. He was the type of student that if he didn't know the answer, you can bet that the next day that he did. I rarely spoke with him on the days that we had exams because the look on his face was probably what you would see from Alexander the Great while he was conquering Macedonia. And so, he was a little bit <laughs> intense. The month of November is also called Movember in order to spread awareness about men's health issues. And part of Movember is dedicating the month to growing the best mustache possible and raise money. I use Richard as my standard to compare all mustaches. <laughs> I call his the classic. I've never grown a mustache before. Richard has had his for 31 years. And to put it into perspective, if Richard's mustache was a real person when I was 15, not only could it, could it have driven me to class, it also could have voted. <laughs> That is how epic of a mustache we were dealing with. <laughs> he would always tease me about my feeble attempt to grow up mine because near the end of the month, it made me look like a mix between Freddie Mercury and a catfish. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm going to leave the mustache growing to the professionals like Richard. By far, my favorite memory that I'll always, that I'll always possess with Richard was about a month ago. Every full moon, a local restaurant puts on an event for the community to hang out and listen to music and relax. When I arrived, Richard was sitting on a picnic bench in a pair of jeans, buttoned down short sleeve shirt, and barefoot with a seat in the sand. We talked briefly about school and how our day was and what we might expect for the next block exams. After that, we sat there and listened to the music. I looked over to Richard after a short time to see him looking up at the night sky. I could almost get a sense 